Hey, Ocean Runner here. I was running this morning uh, in York Beach, my normal route, and I noticed that there's a ton of construction. And I found it really interesting that in order to get a road done, they're talking with the sewer district, the water district, the pavers, even the firefighters are weighing in to make sure that the route is, is how it should be. And they're all working together. And it made me curious as to how that works out in the ocean. When you think about the fishermen and the recreational boaters, and the researchers, all of these people working together. So I'm going to ask Wendy Lull at the Seacoast Science Center if she can tell me more. Want to join me? Hey Wendy, I was curious. I see out in this landscape recreational boaters, um, lobstermen, even a fish farm over here. How do all these entities work together in the ocean? Well you've asked a perfect question for this week, Ocean Runner, okay. because then about three years ago, President Obama decided that we really need to have a better way for all the different traditional users, like the fishermen and sailors, and emerging users like wind farms or even sand farms, and all the different things that we're starting to know about the ocean, we've got to start working better together. And so what he called for is the creation of a national ocean plan. Now, if you think about it in the United States, the whole coastline, east coast, west coast, it's all different. We've got tropics, North New England stuff, very, very different. So it's divided the country into seven different regions and said, go we'll figure it out. How are you guys going to work with the fishermen and the and cruise line? The ocean's getting busier and busier all the time. More boating, more fishing, more demands. How are we going to figure that out? And so very proud to say that New England is the first region in the country to come up with a plan. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's been about three and a half years in the making, and it's a really cool thing. I know planning doesn't sound interesting, but it really is involves looking at all these different maps about what we know that's going on and creating a data portal. So you can go online. Anybody can go online, and you can see what's going on where. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. It saves people a lot of time and money because if you're going to cite, well, let's say you want to open a ferry, move people back and forth from a place, or you want to do a wind farm. You can go to these maps and find out who's going where, what's what's going on, so you could start to understand places where it's just not a good idea. They even know, of course, where the whales are migrating, traditional fishing grounds. And what I find fascinating is that we now know where there are a lot of archaeological sites and shipwrecks. Oh, wow. So there's a lot left to be learned and explored in the ocean, and this is a way for us to really do just what you said, start working together communicating about what we are doing in the ocean and what we want to do. So right now we've got 60 days to look at this plan and give public comment. And a good way to find out all about it and look at that really cool data portal is if you just go to the Seacoast Science Center's website, go down to the blogs on ocean health, and you'll see the one that I just posted about ocean planning. And there are all kinds of links. And you can learn much more about it and see much cooler things than just having me yak at you. Oh, this is great. I can't wait to learn more, and I hope you will too. But for now, gotta run. Thanks, Wendy. Bye, Ocean Runner.